Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. If a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. Ah. <laughs> okay, I have a confession. I have red hair. Now, not much of it now, but it was red. Ginger, you're going to see a couple of photos, I think. Oh, oh, isn't he cute? Anyway, apparently I would not be wanted as a, at a sperm donor... I can barely stop laughing. At a sperm donor clinic. I was drunk in that photo. But the, that's fine with me. But seriously, sperm banks have put a stop to donations from redheads because the demand for redheaded babies just isn't there. But what does this say about the, well, the genuinely important issue of designer babies, for goodness sake? Jack Fonseca is uh, from Campaign Life Coalition. You don't have red hair, do you? I don't, but you know what? Last night, in, in preparation for the show, I, yeah. I tried to dye it red, and I just couldn't get enough dye in there. It didn't really? stick. Did you see those yeah. photos of me when I was younger? Uh, I did, yeah. See, one of them uh, was very little. The other one, uh, it, that actually was the, the, um, the wedding of Prince Charles to Princess Diana, and I was in Germany with a friend. So being British, what did we do? We went on a boat on the Danube, I think it was, and got drunk, like British people do. <laughs> It is a serious issue, because this red-headed thing is irrelevant, but I suppose, but apparently they have 70 litres of, of sperm. Right, and that's enough to... Ay. That's enough for 14... I guess that's 14,000 donations of sperm, and... Um, Not from the same person, surely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, look, if we, if we read, for example, about, I don't know, German-speaking people in the 1930s, 40s, saying we want designer babies, we only want the blonde, blue-eyed babies, we would say that's why we fought a war. But that, to a degree, is what is happening now. People are selecting... I mean, they're not, they're not saying, can we have a handicapped baby? They're generally not saying, can we have a brown baby? They, they, they want a certain type of baby to fit into to what uh, the, the model North American looks like. Yeah, and you're right. This, this red-headed sperm donor thing, while, while it's useful fodder for some jokes about sure. ugly redheads who can't get a date, yeah. Thank you. Uh, it, <laughs> it, uh, it does raise some serious ethical questions. And another example, back in March, there was uh, an Australian ethicist at the Oxford University who made the claim that humanity has a moral obligation to use in vitro fertilization technology to select the most intelligent embryos. And the implication, of course, is that the, the stupider ones, the dumber ones, and keep in mind that every embryonic human is a, is a human being, yeah. it's a human life. Uh, the implication was that those who, are, who don't meet the intelligence test should be discarded but or how, destroyed. How do they measure intelligence of an unborn child? Um, I'm not sure that they were talking about technology that exists at this point, oh, but uh, in the future, if a genetic marker could be found that predicted uh, intelligence or a, mm. or a higher intelligence uh, quotient, that, uh, that the, the IVF technology should be used for that purpose. Right. So you're right, it does raise the specter and of, of the eugenics movement, yeah. which was uh, brought about uh, not so much by the Nazi uh, politicians back in the 1920s and 30s, but by the German doctors. It was the Nazi doctors well, that yes. brought about this idea. And not just uh, Germans, not just doctors. I mean, I, I, I've written at length about people like H.G. Wells and, and Margaret Sanger and, and Sidney and Beatrice Webb. They thought they were making the world a better place. They tended to be on the left. They were socialists. Tommy Douglas in Canada was one of them at one time as well. And so by getting rid of certain types of people, uh, the working class as a whole would in enjoy a better life. If someone with a handicap, uh, particularly one that they have perhaps inherited, went to a, to a sperm bank, there's no way they, they will be allowed to, I mean, the language is so ugly, but donate. They will be turned away. I wonder if that opens any, any, any room for a discrimination lawsuit. Uh, I think there might be there. <laughs> mm. and, uh, but you're, you're totally right. There is an inherent, there is an inherent philosophy of a, 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 superiority, yeah. a superiority of beings where one class of being that's uh, largely uh, measured subjectively, their subjective criteria based on the elites who say we value these characteristics. And what we think that, are the elites. That they, place, uh, that they place greater value on those types of human beings versus other types. Mm. And we've seen this play down through history. Uh, in, in um, you know, I, I actually have it here, but there was a... Uh, oh, you're referring to notes on TV. That's always a good thing. Yeah, well, I, I won't pull it out. I, <laughs> no, don't I, I had a visual. Let me ask you a question, because uh, 
there's sufficient um, supply for, for red headed babies. That's why the, this clinic has said, look, just no more, please, because no one wants red headed babies, so don't, don't come in. Mm -hmm. uh, on a more serious note, Down syndrome. The, the, uh, the doctor who you can't predict completely, but thought there was a likely predictor of Down, of Down syndrome um, in an unborn child. He was pro-life and, and he thought this is wonderful, so now we can make the world a better place for them and, and prepare. And That technology, that ability is now being used to make sure they're never born. That's right. It, and, it, is, it is in fact a type of, um, of genocide where they're targeting, they're, they're actually targeting with prenatal screening. Uh, very often pregnant women are offered prenatal screening mm. and it sounds very nice, but uh, at the heart of it or behind it, there is a, a, a sort of search and destroy mentality where they want to identify babies who might, be, might have Down syndrome yeah. so that then they can offer the choice of aborting that child, effectively yeah. killing that child. Now, knowing that the Down syndrome people I do, and I'm just like anyone else, this is not a question of being better or worse. Um, they may, actually, generally Down syndrome people tend to be, there's an innocence and a love, yes. and um, an unconditional love that makes them in some ways superior. But it, it, for goodness sake, if, if we went up to um, uh, black people or Jewish people and said, you know, we, we'll probably get rid of you. If we, if, we, if we know you're black or you're Jewish, we'll make sure you're not born. We would rightly say, this is grotesque. You can't do this. But because people look slightly different, Down syndrome, not evil in any way, good if anything, we're saying no. No right to be born. That's right. That's absolutely absurd. It's, it's unfair. You know, when we talk about social justice, here's, here's a, those who, who chase after social justice, mm -hmm. And, and raise that banner, this should be a rallying cry for them. The, the, the search and destroy uh, mission that our medical community seems to be on after Down sy syndrome children, and the statistics yeah. are that 95% of them today 95. are aborted. My golly. And it's not just Down syndrome, of course, it's, it's other, other things. No, there's, there's sex selection abortion. Uh, oh. You know, this whole mentality, we, we have the... No, I've, I've got to step around. Sure. But you know, we'll, do an, we'll do another show, but we'll talk about this, because um, if, you're, if you're female, Black, brown, and there's a handicap, you ain't got no chance at no. all. Thank you for your time. Thank you.